It's time for Gardening Inside Out, a live show offering you plant advice for any space in your life. Introducing your perennial hosts, David Bates and Josh Carey. Hey, welcome in, everybody. It's Saturday morning. It is. It's 0800. It is that also. It means it's time for Gardening Inside Out, coming to you live here from the Green Room Studios at Bates Nursery and Garden Center. That is an actual fact. It is an actual fact. Yeah. And uh, we're really happy to have everyone along. Oh, my we're glad goodness to, gracious, yes. We're uh, really glad to be here today and to be officially in spring. Mm-hmm. So uh, there's that. Yes. And we've got a lot of gardening talk to get to yep. because uh, we have questions you have sent in. Actually, a plethora. A plethora? A plethora of those questions. But before we get into that and w- before we uh, introduce our mm-hmm. cast members here, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Let's talk about the weather. Yes. And we'll do that uh, rather briefly, hopefully succinctly. Today is Saturday, the 23rd of mm-hmm. March. It's going to be noticeably cooler than yesterday. <laughs> you think so? Yeah, it already is 58 <laughs> degrees for the high temperature today and partly cloudy conditions. We're looking for an overnight low, about 35 degrees. And mm. um, so probably some scattered frost around the areas don't be surprised at that going to warm up a bit tomorrow however on sunday 69 50 for the low so that's pretty nice but then clouds roll in I do. monday tuesday and some rainfall perhaps uh an inch or so uh, combined from the late day monday <sighs> to early morning tuesday and that's just the way that is because it's springtime and you know we need to get rain and uh, but then when the rain stops, get back to you know sunshine again. And I'm gonna have partly cloudy conditions on Wednesday, mostly sunny on Thursday, 61, 62, uh, lows in the upper 30s. So you know still chance of frost out in outlying areas. Don't be shocked by that, folks. It's just the way that it is. You know, it's we, not even April yet, man. No, but it's it's very normal. Uh-huh. So don't be making too much of it. Uh, the forecast for next weekend, and I believe next Friday is Good Friday. Is that correct? I think that's right. Oh, so uh, mm. I think I know it's, it's going to be early, a good weather Friday. It's an early. Uh, that's that's the week of two Saturdays, because. Uh, Good Friday is like a Saturday around here at Bates oh, Nursery. Okay. So anyway, we'll uh, we'll look forward to seeing everyone out. Uh, currently, it is zero degrees. That's not right. <laughs> oh, <laughs> whoa. Uh, let me go over here. Either. Let me go over here to my uh, my rainfall calculator. So it's currently about forty three degrees. We got forty three hundredths of an inch of rain uh, in the um, after hours yesterday. And uh, that, so that gets us up to 375 for the month or 1338 for the year. So we are mm-hmm. uh, continuing to add to that. And as I mentioned earlier, looks like another inch of rainfall could occur this week. Uh, that's just the way it is. So anyway, mm. we are uh, we're all golden on the weather department. It's very typical weather. A lot of people come out and go, well, where are all your annuals? Just because Tomato it's plants. too early. If you're in a spot that is loaded up with annuals and flowers, uh, they either have no knowledge or they don't have a conscience because uh, <laughs> we, we have to try to educate people as to what is reasonable to expect and uh-huh. what they can do uh, when they're planting, uh, particularly warm season annuals, it's just too early. So you, know, you can get them and put them in a larger container and grow them for a while and move them in and out and because that's what you're going to need to do for just a bit or else build some kind of a structure over them where you have them planted. So, Or just wait, yep. which is what we really suggest. We're gonna, we'll have a lot more by next weekend, uh, rest assured of that. But we did kind of throttle back for another week thanks to uh, – the Mama. capable judgment of Julie Patterson, yes. the goddess of all things green at Bates Nursery. Thank you, Julie, for all you do. And uh, we've got a lot of things to choose from, but there'll be a lot more forthcoming. And without uh, further ado, let's talk uh, to the, our uh, cast members here, Josh. What do you say? What, the what, cast? Yeah. They're the, not a splint. Uh, they I'm are the cast. To, I'm talking about Caroline <laughs> okay. Gant, Austin Lowen. Welcome yes. in, guys. Good morning. Good morning. Tyler Blankenship across the way. Where's the cam, Tyler? Come on, let us there see. There he is. Tyler okay. Cam. Hi. 
And uh, we're certainly glad to have uh, all participants in studio today, self-included. Mm-hmm. And uh, it is spring, guys. I know. More yes. than just more than just uh, actual spring, the activity level at Bates Nursery is undeniable. Yes, it's mm-hmm. wild. Right now. Mm-hmm. It is. It is wild, and it's you. You kind of you have this one continuous conversation that just drifts from one person to the next and mm-hmm. and someone comes in the next day and they go, you remember yesterday when I uh, <laughs> maybe, <laughs> you know, it's, so it's a little difficult. Where were you a half an hour ago? It's, Much, it, you know, it's a little I difficult understand. to track that. So if you're talking to us and we seem as though we don't uh, remember, it's because we don't remember. <laughs> I mean, now we, we remember the, uh, the technical nature of what it is, but the specifics of the situation we might have to be re- refreshed on. So, yep. and we do ask uh, your ask. patience when you come out today because it's very stressful on us this time of year. We've we have a, a really tremendous and large staff, but you know, it's still a finite number, and we have a lot of folks come out this time of year and we're appreciative of that and we want to do everything we can to help everyone we possibly can so Mm -hmm. any preparations you can make on your end to be uh, prepared to present us with your the facts of your particular horticultural or gardening situation in advance helps us out because we've got one of these uh, one of these one of those and have your photographs if you can Go ahead and have them organized into a folder in Ooh. your photograph so that you don't have to go searching through. You know, I know your Greece trip last year was wonderful, but <laughs> my kitty cat. We uh, got to get we can't we got to get okay. straight no to pictures. the gardening okay. stuff because there's there's a lot of stuff going on. So let's okay. just do that without further ado. Good morning, guys. I shrimp the Good morning. Okay. Glad <laughs> glad to have uh, all aboard and this opportunity to. Uh, Talk about the outdoors. This is our time of year. You know, people, mm-hmm. it's Christmas in the uh, nursery industry. Mm-hmm. It is. Mm-hmm. And it's exciting. It is exciting. I am. Uh, and, and, you know, there's a, a bit of horror associated with it because <laughs> there's a lot. Krampus, you know, as it were? Well, well it, just, it just means that we really collectively have to be uh, attentive and focused on all of the things going on around us because... Mm-hmm. Uh, while there is a, a lot of really good things that can and do occur, that also makes it easier to make a mistake. So we try not to do that. It's but mm-hmm. it's challenging. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. You, I think the biggest word is observance. Like every day, I'm going home and looking at every single plant, pretty much, <laughs> yeah. to see like where it's at, where its stage is at. You know, if it's got tiny leaves, if it's starting to get butted up, whatever the stage, like I'm looking at that every day. And I know like normal, you know, people aren't necessarily doing that, but you have to kind of do that this time of year with the weather always in the back of your mind because the weather can change and those little tiny leaves can get messed up a little bit. So really observing right now Mm -hmm. is something you need to be doing. Yeah. And it's not just from uh, a tender foliage. You know, we've got these red tip potinias we Mm -hmm. see down front and we'll be talking more about what all is in here. But Mm -hmm. you will notice that red is extremely young, tender growth. And Mm -hmm. if you have things that have they don't have to be red in color to be tender, those new leaves are especially susceptible to the ravages of nature, be it cold, be it a pest, be it disease. Those things are, they don't have much resilience built, built into them when they're young. So that's why that when we are walking around the lot and in our yards, we're paying close attention to the stage of what things are because it gives us the uh, visual cues of what we need to be mindful of and what are the possible and mm-hmm. likely problems that can occur depending on what the climate is giving us. Mm-hmm. Got to so, be watching. Got Being to. mindful. Yeah, I take little garden walks every day when I get home. Every day. When it's light. And it's so exciting. Everything's growing so fast. My um, allium is up. My cat mint is already like a little wow. shrub. Nip-a-do. My switchgrass uh-huh. is pushing up. Haven't mm-hmm. cut it yet. So I know. I need to cut mine, too. It's getting, I'm not ready because it gives me some privacy on my front porch. But uh, it it's also, about that time. But that, that, that walk also might bring bad news because you oh, no. might be walking around in your yard and see that there might have to be some things replaced. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah. Yeah. Possibly. yeah. It's very possible. And it happens to us too. Like it, we're yeah. not immune to that just because we do this for a career. You know, like right. it, randomly <laughs> enough, yeah, one is. hibiscus died on me last year. Yeah. I yeah. had a grouping of three. One didn't come back. Why? I don't know. Yeah, Something nature, happened. Nature does not play favorites. No, it no, doesn't. It does and it can be highly annoying sometimes. And there's stuff that I've got to go in and replace every once in a while too. But like I say, we want to get to saying, y'all, just keep digging. Yep. yep. Just keep digging, okay? Yeah, Something and, bad happens. Just keep digging. And, and now are we not seeing uh, a lot of the people uh, come in who rightly waited to see if their plants were going to come out from the previous year's freeze? You know, we had this terrible mm-hmm. freeze back in before Christmas in 2022 that, I mean, it was Awful. rough. Mm-hmm. Yep. And people some people waited and had really good success with things growing back out uh, other things not so much so uh, the people who did wait and I think it was a good decision to do that a lot of those are seeing that well their boxwoods are not going to come out or, mm-hmm. or maybe their laurels or whatever that right. it was in particular that were particularly that were especially susceptible so uh, we're seeing a lot of those kinds of folks coming out and Rightly so, you know. I don't. There, if they had, haven't coming out by now, they're not going to. Yeah. No, I don't think so. <laughs> no. I lost a couple, but I let them go. All right, let's yeah. get to questions. Okay, we've got quite a few, and we have a lot about damaged plants that happened probably back in December and some this year. All right, we're going to start with laurels, those little problem child plants. Mm-hmm. My cherry laurels turned brown in spots from snow and ice. What should I do to help them? All right. So, yes, this did happen again this year. They didn't lose their leaves totally like they did, you know, with the big freeze event. But this year they didn't like that cold. They really didn't. So, like, the topmost leaves got brownish like you're talking about, um, and they look off color. Really, those leaves are not going to come back and look good again. So if you wanted to strip those individual leaves, like you certainly could. And, uh, you know, you can fertilize. Let's give them some compost or whatever to help down below. Anything you can help down below is going to help up top. Um, And you're going to see the new buds form and send new leaves out that will replace those old-looking yuck leaves. So it's just a matter of time. They're getting ready to come out soon. And it might be necessary to take your shears and, Mm -hmm. you know, prune back in there three or four inches. Yeah. Uh, And they're such growing machines anyway. There's no detriment whatsoever to shearing them back, uh, particularly if they are the, you know, the— the Carolina laurels or the cherry laurels that we have known for many years before the use of skip laurels and English laurels and all those got used a lot in the areas. They they are growing machines, so mm-hmm. shear them back, uh, get that fertility in check, whether, yeah. like Austin said, either using compost or organic fertilizer would be great. Mm-hmm. And they're going to come back out fast. Yep. So that's really all you got to do. Mm-hmm. Mine recovered really quickly from the 2022 freeze from the ground, but they grew pretty quickly. Mm-hmm. Um, so let's talk about hollies now. Mm. There's some hollies that have leaves that have turned brown and dropped on two of my hollies, one more than another. Should I be worried? And is this fixable? <laughs> hmm. uh, Mother Nature will fix it for you, typically. I mean, that uh, hollies, once again, another broadleaf evergreen that can see some damage when we see those temps down in that zero or even negatives that we saw a little bit. Um, that they can get injured. Okay, injured is the word though. It's not death. It's it's injury. So we got to just wait, y'all. It's still just. I mean, I know it's spring, but it is before spring leaf emergence. Okay, so we kind of need to just wait it out, and you're gonna see new buds form and push new leaves. I don't see any problem. I don't think your plant's diseased or anything. It's just it took some damage. Yeah, and one of yeah. the things that people need to be mindful of, if you want to save yourself a little work, you know, I talked about trimming on laurels uh, on the. Previous question, this is the same question, it's just a different species of plant. What you might prefer to do is just wait and see where new growth starts to emerge. That tells you precisely where you need to cut back to. Yes. Uh, yeah. And there's going to be a lot of things that are going to have some uh, dieback because uh, here at the nursery, we got to 10 below zero. Now, it didn't get that cold everywhere, but it, it got below zero yeah. almost everywhere in the area. So because of that, there's going to be some dieback uh, yeah. and just expect it. But it does not mean they're dead. No. Just be patient. You know, it's funny. Right up the road up here, I've been watching a holly since last since the, the bad freeze or whatever. It came back, but it came back 
really tight along that main stem. So right. it's all these leaves on the interior of the plant, and then there's all these gnarly sticks that are out behind it, <laughs> and no one's pruned that thing yet. And I'm like, oh, God, people, I want to stop by and prune that for them because there's so much green growth that wants to be I bet out it in the cool, light. He no, it doesn't look cool. To, I'd leave he, it. No, he wants it looks to, spooky. But will he? I won't. <laughs> <laughs> And no, sure? Carolina, you it does not look cool. It looks gnarly and like it needs to be fixed. I Someone feel like it probably looks holly. spooky. It really does look cool. spooky. That's a good word. But no. And that's them, neat. Cut them. Like Leave David them. said, it showed you where it leafed back out from. So the rest that's not leafed out. That's like, dead. That's dead. And you have to look at that every single day it's awful. on your yeah, drive. 15 I know. Months what are these people doing to, to me? Wait. You think? So, somehow yeah. I feel they like they're, they're doing something. They're, they're, they have been avoiding looking at it yeah. every day for 15 <laughs> months. <laughs> they probably just don't care. Hey, we got a live question yep. in that pertains to this. So half of my Rose Creek abelia died. The other half looks good. Should I dig it up or wait? To semi broadleaf, be yeah. patient. That Once may again. just be defoliation. Mm -hmm. Now, a lot of times, and what's strange about what's a, a fact that people don't widely recognize is that when they grow these things, they do it with multiple cuttings, okay. and you can have. That's probably a separate cutting from, you know, they, they grow together. You can't tell that it's two plants, but it actually is. So you may have one that has, because of the direction it faced or whatever, just defoliated. Be patient on it. Yeah. Cut the whole thing back. The same rule applies. Wait and see. Wait mm -hmm. and, and see. And worst case scenario, prune that one side out. Yeah. Let it come back and then it all comes back to do you like it or not yeah. whether you dig it up or not I mean that's the thing they're a fast grower so I wouldn't yeah. give up on it no is mm -hmm. very hardy very mm -hmm. hardy it's so pretty bye now I'll be you later <laughs> oh uh, hey, that yeah. one was good we got a live on the Facebook page from uh -huh. Kimberly and she says hey there hey, hey there hi there hey. Uh, is it still too, still too soon to plant just anything <laughs> well, for most no. things, no. No, for no, I mean, trees really. and shrubs. I mean, last weekend, y'all, we just kicked it. We were so busy, and it was almost mm -hmm. all trees and shrubs. Like, tons of people were out buying. Now, always, like we said, watch that weather a little bit. If you're buying a red tip photinia that looks like this with the tiniest, you know, most tender growth you can get, if you're going to plant that, watch the weather. If you're going to see something that's going to dip below freezing or even uh -huh. below, say, 35. Like you might want to cover that up it, if you don't want to lose that you know that new foliage. Just some just some sheets that you can mm -hmm. yeah, pull over the top will help tremendously. It's very difficult to uh, um, to overlook a red tip fatinium. I mean, and if you're they're, starting from seed, it's not going to hurt anything today. Not likely. I mean, they're probably very tough. Depends yeah. on what that is. Yeah, but if it really it's, is. But if it is a seed that you've started in the ground, well, I tell you, if it's a warm season, it hadn't done anything yet. Yeah, it's no. still a seed. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah, my it's, poppy seeds are coming up, but those are more of a cold weather. Mm -hmm. And I was excited to see them; mm -hmm. they're hard to find. And the, and the cold weather's not going to if we have a frost. It's not going to bother right, it them. Won't hurt they're them. very adept at dealing mm -hmm. with it. Nature somehow knows these yeah, things. Exactly. It's wild. Uh -huh. Y'all plant some poppies; they're the best, and they're low maintenance. All right, we do have another question about mm -hmm. pruning. Dragon Prince Cryptomeria has brown tips. Should I prune these off? Yeah. That happens a lot with Cryptomeria, actually. I mean, it's good. Your Dragon Prince is still up and looking good. But, yeah, they do suffer some some damage over the winter a lot of times, mainly from the tips, okay? So I've seen it here at the nursery. We overwinter them here, and they a lot of times will get a little bit of brown tips at the end. Nothing wrong with that. Just shear them off or yep. just do hand pruners. Go in there and do it, you know. Clip, clip. Yeah, just clip them off. Uh, so, yeah, you're not going to hurt anything. It's it, it, You're lucky and you're good that your cryptomeria is still alive and doing well. So <laughs> yep. now that it's just tip damage, then you're okay. Just prune it off and you'll see new growth soon. Just make it pretty again. All right, we got a crepe myrtle question live on our YouTube page. All right. Good morning. I missed pruning my crepe myrtle this year. Is it too late to do it today? Uh, no, do it today. I actually need to do the same thing. I got to get mine pruned up. Oh, aren't it's, you going to like create murder? I was, yeah, I'm going to have to a little bit. Me and Tyler were going to do a video on it. We haven't got to it yet, but whatever. It's fine. But it's still <laughs> dormant. Your crepe myrtle is still dormant. Cut it back now. You need to do it. And they flower on the Dude. new growth. Yes. So you you compromise nothing. Mm -mm. Uh, sometimes you just got to rein them in. I have some Natchez crepe myrtle that we planted at my house under some really high power lines with at least... They appear to be really high. Mm -hmm. The, the Natchez crepe myrtle yeah. can get 30 feet tall. Yes, the power lines are probably only 27. So mm -hmm. every what couple, of, yeah, every what couple of years, yeah. I have to rein them, them back rain in them a back. little bit because uh, our power company 
It needs to keep those out of the lines. And, and, I, and I get that. And you don't want them trimming it. They no. trim differently than yes. I do. Yeah, oh, but uh, what, they, what they're talking about is premeditated crepe murder. <laughs> yes, mm-hmm. well, yeah. and they don't have to ask you. Mm-hmm. Oh. They, they are, they're pretty good about letting you know. But that's, that's first degree. But that's their job. You okay. know? They, their job is keeping power on, and, they, and so it's our job to go, okay, I need to be mindful of what their job is yes. so that I can make my stuff look the way I want it to look. There so, you go. It's, you know, we can all work together. It just oh. takes a little cooperation. You know what? It, you know what? The, the first thing that you should do when you're talking about any of these things, David? Well, Lee? you know, when you get ready to plant, you need to be thinking about what am I going to do to have the best soil and the <laughs> best growing conditions I can possibly produce. And, right. you know, and that always makes me think of Earth Mix Garden. Me product. too. Yeah. And because Earth Mix Garden products are 100% organic, the most viable growing medium you can get anywhere. And it's manufactured right here in Nashville, Tennessee. Mm-hmm. With all the best stuff, there are no chemical additives whatsoever. Uh, the uh, At Earth Mix Garden Products, we continually research the uh the inputs of organic materials that are highly productive, highly fertile, that can be incorporated in the right proportions Mm -hmm. to make supernatural compost, garden, proganics, O, landscape mix. All of these are specifically made to help you get optimal growing. The plants don't just hang on and survive. It's going to give you optimal growth. And when you get plants established well, that means it reduces the amount of water you need to have. It it creates a buffer for error because you know we're all human. Yeah. We make mistakes. It takes a lot of the work out of gardening, and that's what we really try to help you do at Earthmix Garden Products. So no matter which product you select, uh, you're assured of getting the highest quality, 100% organic. Only the very best uh, amendments are in there, and they're all uh, completely uh, beneficial. Things like mycorrhizal fungi, oh, yeah. humic acid. Oh, it's good on a cracker, uh, too. And well, <laughs> I don't know about that. But, <laughs> Pushing it, Josh. <laughs> but it sounds good. Uh, all the things Earthmix Garden products are available uh, at independent garden centers and resellers all over the um, well, all over the uh, area, uh, most specifically in Tennessee and mm-hmm. Kentucky. We also have, a, and, and help me, Tyler, our new uh, seller out in Montana. It's, uh, uh, I mean, Idaho. I mean. Victory Idaho. Gardens. Victory Gardens out in, in Idaho. In Meridian, Idaho. So right. that's the Treasure Valley. And we'll hopefully get them on the map here so it'll zoom out a little bit. They're on the map. you got to uh, zoom out. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you really got to... <laughs> Got to go far. Let me see. Or even is no, come on. Well, not that far. I'm Uh-oh. not seeing them. Okay. Uh-oh. Well, maybe next week. Okay. <laughs> but, but rest assured, um, Earthmix Garden uh, products are available at all these locations you see here on the map. You can find those locations by going to earthmix.net and just click on the Find Earthmix tab. And you can either put your address in for turn by turn directions to the location nearest you or simply zoom in like at Bluegrass Garden Center, mm-hmm. or if you go to uh, uh, Meadowview Greenhouse, you know they're all out there. Check those out at mm-hmm. earthmix.net. Remember this, success in gardening begins at the ground level. When you use Earthmix garden products, and we appreciate you giving us a couple of minutes to talk about that. Help take the work out of gardening and increase your success. So... Support very, these very support good. these great locations that do that. By the way, there is a dealer inquiries tab up there if you're yes. interested in being a reseller and the little handy dandy soil calculator so you can figure out how many bags you need of which product you're talking about. So yep. so there you go. Earth Mix Garden Products, check it out. Kimberly came back and said uh, perennial flowers is what she was wanting to plant. If you can find them. I yeah. Guess, yeah I've planted you know. a lot. We've got a lot of our four inch right now. But like we talked about with stuff that's in here, um, some of it has been is coming from warmer climate. So yeah, it's already little babies along. Too, And I was so. talking with uh, Celeste and Bridget down mm-hmm. in the perennials yesterday. And, you know, they had sold the last of our hardy ferns. I mean, it's just it's for a couple of days. So if you come out today, you, we're just out because mm-hmm. we sold them all. We're bad for that. <laughs> we sold all of our hardy ferns? Uh, wow. Uh, yes, yes. Oh, my gosh. So we have more coming in on Tuesday, though. Yes. So there'll yeah. be a lot more. So uh, uh, unless something came in that I'm unaware of, 
from about three o'clock yesterday <laughs> afternoon. Don't think and I this, saw a truck. It's not impossible because mm-hmm. uh, yeah. the truck's rolling here pretty much nonstop. Mm-hmm. One after the other during the week. Mm-hmm. Speaking of one after the other, there's a lot of things that are happening one after the other as they open all around town that you see. What's <laughs> in bloom? With Austin. All right. <laughs> hey, y'all. Things are blooming. Okay. Yes, they are. Here we go. Let's talk about them low flowering things. Hey, creeping flocks is blooming. Those blues, those pinks, those whites that are out in the yard just pop up every year without a problem. Mm -hmm. That's what you're seeing that's on the ground right now. Creeping flocks. Candy tuft is blooming, which is a little nice little mostly evergreen plant that blooms white in the spring. I really love this paired with boxwood. Surprise, surprise. Okay, flowering almonds. You never even thought about a flowering almond, probably. Little bitty shrubs that bloom pink all the way up the stem. Those are blooming right now. Don't you have one? Yes. My Still? mom got it for me. Your mom got you the plant and it's how's it doing? You know what? I left it in the pot. I think I think it might still be alive. I don't know. Uh, you know Cherry that thing's is. dead. Oh. <laughs> All right. right. <laughs> Big white blooming shrubs. Bridal respiria still in bloom. Quince and Forsythia, those two go hand in hand. Yep. They look yes. great. Big large shrubs. Hey, peaches and weeping peaches, y'all. They're so good. We got a couple weeping peaches in yesterday. Put them right up front. Pedro, put them right up front. Look at that bloom. Tyler got a picture. Oh. Arching stems with double pink blooms. They, My goodness. They are outstanding. Loaded. <laughs> Love me a peach. Can't help it. Y'all, crab apples are stunning. They right are now. killing oh, it. Oh, right they're now. killing it. Really killing it. It's a different kind of pink out there, okay? It's not like a peach pink. Right. It's not like a cherry pink. It's different. It's like darker, and they are really full clustered up. Crab apples, really good. Hey, we got some nice crab apples on the lot right now. Y'all yep. come out and check. Everybody needs one if you ask me. The whole me. tree lot looks great it over there. It does look good yeah. right now. Go mm-hmm. take a walk in it. Hey, it's been a red bud spring. Red yes. buds are beautiful. Mm-hmm. That's beautiful. And also, Yoshino cherries. Those two bloom about the same time. The white blooming Yoshinos, my God, y'all. They are we went through up. a frost scenario last week. Didn't touch them. Me and David said, we're like, no, don't worry about them cherries. They're going to be fine. And they are. Just didn't even take a hit. Nope. Red buds cherries are just full show right now. Good Lord. I love Yoshino cherry. And Josh Bradford still blooming a little bit. David, and I, regular mm-hmm. pears are still blooming. But hey, I'm going to end this with you know what's not blooming? Your what's deciduous magnolias because yes. they got whacked last week. Yes, they did. Done, yeah. gone, brown, ugly. Oh, no. no you know what? They'll be pretty again. They're going to shoot leaves mm-hmm. here real soon. But and no later, more blooms. And later blooming types of deciduous magnolias will still flower. Yeah, is. Caroline's okay. got one that she showed me. It reblooms like randomly in the summer. Like, yeah, mine blooms at least twice. One year it actually bloomed three times. Austin they're doesn't weird. believe me, yeah. but it did. I happen. do believe you. You do now. You should be taking cuttings on that one because that uh-huh. might have some special attributes. attributes. That, uh, well, yep. Yes. Well, there's all sorts of, of female names for uh, uh, magnolias. Add Caroline to the list. Caroline Magnolia. Take some cuttings. Yeah, there you go. Uh-huh. We've already got Jane and Elizabeth. Like, why not, might as why well Caroline? add a Caroline. It kind of fits in. Uh-huh. Um, yeah. But There you go. I love my magnolia. I actually had my hickory tree lost a branch and fell on top of it last Uh-oh. year. So it's kind of got a hole in it, yes. but it's still okay. It's still doing fine. It's pretty mature. Fortunately, they are a shrubby, multi-stem type of shrubby. tree by nature. Yeah. So, you know, it's not unusual that they get, you know, either frozen back or something <laughs> falls on or them. Or something falls on them. <laughs> Mine is pretty big. It um, is pretty big. He, yeah, he, he said they were height, my but... Bradford pears, David. Uh, <laughs> They're yours, uh, Josh. That, all was, of them. Uh, that uh, was right on the edge of blasphemy. <laughs> Blas- okay. I mean, should should he be? Should we ask? That, are you members of the Bradford Pear Eradication Society? Either one of you, Tyler? Not a member. No. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I think back, I got my back paperwork in the, in the day, mail. Yeah. You want to join? Yeah. Back, no, back, in, back in the day when Josh and I were doing uh, radio together, we would have the whole ceremony we would do on air with <laughs> yeah. people had to. Take the pledge. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> uh, I, I, I if promise. you want to join, no, Tyler, would you like to join? Yeah. Okay. In, indoctrinate me. Okay. Uh, <laughs> or inaugurate or whatever. Repeat after me. Okay. I state your name. I state his name, okay. Tyler. Oh, no. Okay. Well, he, eh, you think you're in? You're I in. <laughs> okay. You made it. it. You're in. Oh, there's the Tyler cam. All right, let's hop back on our question train (laughs) because we still have a lot. Transplanted a weeping red bud in early October. It is not budding right now. Uh Is it a goner? Mm. (laughs) (laughs) Maybe. Not seeing anything? Just like nothing, nothing? Not Mm. even a spit of a bloom or, or any leafage at all like our red buds on the lot like it they're tiny but they are leafing just starting to leaf so 
you transplanted it, so maybe it's a little late. You know, maybe it's going to wake up a little later. Don't don't totally give up on it yet, but it's not good that it's not doing anything yet. I will say, and it's probably not as small as some of mine on my property, but I have an old red bud, and I have little volunteers that pop up um, in Dude. my beds, and I've let some go. And the ones that are only like three feet tall, it's like a twig or a couple twigs, aren't doing anything. And, and I know I will, they're alive. Yeah, the babies and, take a little yeah. while. And yeah. not all transplantings are created equal. Mm-hmm. I will just say, you know, yeah. you may have dug an undersized ball you might have let the dirt all break off of the root ball you might have left it lying out in the sun for a few minutes there's Mm -hmm. a whole litany of mistakes that can be made and i'm not saying that you did but i'm saying that uh, they're fairly unforgiving if you make the wrong mistakes and it doesn't necessarily kill them but it can show signs of things such as late to leaf out and no flowering so Mm -hmm. i wouldn't give up on it yet yeah, and you flag might. it next year because there are plenty of them out there in the tree lines in the woods. You can go out there. And, and there are very yeah. specific guidelines yeah. to go by if you're transplanting something as far yeah. as how large a root ball right. that are, according to the ANSI standards, the American Nursery Standards uh, Ante. Index. Oh, yeah. Ante. So that's, cool. those are out there for a reason. Generally speaking, if you're uh, about a one foot of root ball for every caliper inch and that's measured uh, six inches off the ground if it's a small tree so Mm -hmm. it works into a lot of weight and a lot of people go oh that's too heavy i I can't dig all that Uh (laughs) so but you got to hey while we're on the topic of transplanting we got a question i planted my hydrangea in a bad spot when is the best time to to transplant (laughs) transplant and when do i fertilize All right, so transplanting typically we always talk about is done during dormancy, so through the winter time. Fertilizing is a different thing. That's when it's dropped before they're actively growing. So typically right around now, mm-hmm. get your fertilizer dropped fertilizer dropped and that will, you know, the plant will be able to use that. I don't know what type of hydrangea you've got, but I'm assuming most hydrangeas are starting to bud and leaf. Not like the end of the world if you had to do it now, but you know, we typically don't recommend that. But, you know, hydrangeas can be still pretty hardy plants. So if you need to get it done, like do it. Like do it. Yes. The one little tip, if you're going to do it now, dig the hole that you're going to transplant it to first. Mm-hmm. And then, and that which infers that you've got to know how big the root ball is going to be that you're going to dig out of. So you need to kind of have that figured out. Dig your hole where it goes to first. Bigger. Dig it. Move it immediately into it. Put your your backfill soil mix back in around it and water it thoroughly immediately. Mm -hmm. Do not delay. Do not wait. Well, we've got a good rain. Forget all of that. Yeah. Water it thoroughly right then. It settles all the air pockets out and it rehydrates it. So your chances of transplant shock are greatly minimized. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right. I have a lot of old viburnum on my property and they do not bloom. Is it too late to fertilize? It's not too late to fertilize. No, definitely not. Like it's the time to fertilize now. I don't know why they're not blooming though. That sounds strange. That's maybe they like excessive sun? shade. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe excessive shade. Maybe. You know, that's mm. one of the things that changes a lot that, that we frequently uh, don't realize because this, these big trees keep growing and what what was a lot of light maybe six or seven years ago and now is a whole lot more shade. So Mm -hmm. perhaps that's a part of the equation. And also, too, there's a number of viburnums that bloom off of that old wood. So if you're doing any pruning over the wintertime, you could potentially be cutting off those flower buds that would have been produced through the Mm -hmm. winter and then bloom. So that maybe could be a thing. There's that. Colin on our Facebook page says, the segues just keep getting better and better. LOL. Thank you, Colin. <laughs> nice call. Spell Good check morning, that, Colin. That's what I was checking to see if spelling is correct. He, he's got good balance anyway. So. <laughs> so let's go ahead and segue into our next question. Okay. Oh, is there anything to do now to keep Rose Rosette at bay? <laughs> And that comes from our good friend, Miriam. Oh. Good morning, Miriam. Hi, Miriam. 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 Miriam, you're awake. Miriam, you're awake. Congratulations. You're awake. You did it. Um, You know, Miriam, you can preventively spray, I guess, roses to keep, to make sure that the mite, so it's a tiny mite that makes rose rosette happen. And we don't mean maybe. Yeah, no, it does. And, but, you know, unless you're really on top of insecticides and constantly doing that, like almost every two weeks or so, like, it's kind of hard. Like, that little tiny mite gets in there before you ever know it. It's so small. Um, once you've got rose rosette, as y'all probably know, it doesn't go anywhere. It's nope. a virus. It's not something we can change. So, 
Um, Miriam, that depends on how much work you want to do, how much money you want to spend on insecticides, and really how much you want to spray insecticides. Like, I'm not big on that. Like, I'm sorry, if rose rosette happens, it's like, ah, well. But the good thing about happens. it, if you have a, an affected rose with rose rosette, you can simply get it out and remove any of the affected plants, and then you can— And the leaves. And the leaves. Then you can immediately replant. You don't have to wait. No. Uh, but if you can take some preventive action, um, insecticides are— are the the best way to do it, but mites are probably not going to be all that well controlled by use of things like insecticidal soap. No. They, they, that's great for aphids, but it won't do much for mites. Dormant oil is great, will do all right on mites, but they're already actively growing, right. so they're not dormant. That's the thing. So it's a little tough. <laughs> yeah, it's hard to prevent. It really is. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Miriam. Sounds a little bit scary. Yeah. Is that Thank the you, one Miriam. we need? Is that, that, is that one of them that we need to clean our shears on too, or on our? Clippers? That's always a good practice. Yeah. yeah I never do heard that. Alcohol. Just do that um, without thought to what you're pruning next or anything else. But yes, cleaning your shears is is a is a part of having effective pruning because uh, you can't make a good clean cut if you've got a lot of sap resin that's dried right. or it's beginning to make sticky. So you you wind up making uh, wounds that are not clean. So if you have nice, sharp, clean shears, it just makes life so much better. Mm -hmm. It really does. Hey, Caroline, Barbara wants to know. She says she bought a small potted oxalis. It's struggling. How can she help it? Cut it back. So with my oxalis, um, oh, I find that this time of year, if you buy them at like the grocery store, if you get them at your nursery center, um, they were probably blooming when you got them. And with mine, it seems like Mine will bloom. They'll be gorgeous. They'll get a little bit leggy and start to look sad and drop some of their um, some of mm -hmm. their leaves. So I'll usually just give it a cut all the way back to the soil line, and they'll flush out really well. Now, they can handle some full sun. You think that they want a lot of shade. You can get them into a little bit of morning light to get some direct sunlight, and then they'll get a little bushier and be more full. So once you cut them back, if you do decide to do that, they'll flush out. If you don't want to cut them back, um, you can just remove anything that looks a little sad Water it thoroughly, just soak it, and maybe get it into a little bit more sunlight. But I do find that just a good a good haircut all the way down to the dirt does really well with these. Hey, and after you cut it, eat it. They, it tastes and funny. And after you cut it, what? eat it. It tastes funny. <laughs> yeah. I love the taste. Me and my little brother used to eat it as a kid. It was weed in the yard, but it tastes real good to me. It's called, it's what we used to refer to as sour grass. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. That old sour grass. Yeah, I yeah. like that. It tastes good. Yeah. Oxalic acid. Oxalic hmm. acid. Yeah. Let's talk persimmon trees, y'all. No. Someone just talk, picked talk, up some persimmon talk, talk trees. Talk about making you pucker. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. I have one that uh, fruits every year, and I, I don't really enjoy the fruit that I get off of it. It looks well, cool, though. Wait until and the after animals the frost. like it. Wait until after the frost. Get them really oh. good and cold before you eat them. And then go for it. Yeah, well, this person wants to know any tips and tricks we might have on them. Yeah. I mean, you know, that's a native plant around yes. here in our woods. So, I mean, they, they live here very well. And they actually grow faster than you think they would. Like, Anne in the office has been growing a persimmon tree for, like, I think, three or four years now. And hers is big. Yes. So not too much added things besides just getting it planted. Now, getting more than just one is something that's very helpful with yep. getting a lot more fruit. So planting a stand of three or so, you know, say 15, 20 feet apart from each other and just designating a part of the yard for them is always helpful. More pollen, more fruit, it's all better. And since they don't make golf clubs out of them anymore, <laughs> they're not as endangered as Well, <laughs> and um, trust me, folks, if once it gets started producing, you are going to have a bit of a mess. And you're going to have deer. And, yes, oh, so yeah. That's deer true. love them. And so do corgis. Tons? Oh, really? Well, corgis <laughs> really? Are no, they just, yes, it's, Corgis are so tough to uh, uh, figure out. There's tons of, tons of deer hunters that come out here actively seeking persimmon just to yes. bring in deer. It's very helpful. Huh, I did not know that when I planted one. Sounds like the name mm -hmm. of a movie, Actively Seeking Persimmons. <laughs> actively Seeking Persimmons. That was huh? Susan. Does. Oh. <laughs> no, I was desperately seeking persimmons. Okay, it would be what it was. <laughs> hey, we've mentioned some native plants, so we're going to take a little switch. Best okay. native plants to help with erosion. Oh, you know where I'm going with I this. I know exactly switch where you're going. Switchgrass, easy yep. on this. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's like literally used for, for erosion control. And y'all know I love switchgrass, and it's a native grass. It's awesome. Like, 
That's I mean that's what I'm using. I'm not even going anywhere else. And if you ask Bridget, you'll get the same answer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Uh, there may be areas that uh, separate horticulturally the views that you, uh, Austin and Bridget, have. <laughs> but switchgrass is not one no, of them. No, no. We love our switch together. Oh, North Wind specifically, y'all. Yep. It's my favorite. Yeah, that one's a good. It's so clean. It's so upright. And where I wonder can we get North Wind switchgrass though? Where can we get that? I don't know. Well, David I does. would say <laughs> that if you looked over at a little place called Bates Nursery and Garden Center. Like, it's right outside the building here, right? Yeah, it's just okay. yeah, it's right, right out right there. Outside that kind door. of anywhere you point, uh -huh. it's right outside here. And uh, there's my grandmother, Bessie hey. Bates, and she's the one who uh, is responsible for all of this being here. You know, it would never have happened were nope. it not for now, she, she didn't start out where we are right now. Well, we actually it was over on 26th in Charlotte here in Nashville 92 years ago. It was really oh, hard to believe. And I, I wasn't around back then. Uh, if I was, I'm, I'm, I'd have to say I'd be looking pretty good. So if I can just tell myself that I'm 92, I, I'll look great. But I'm not 92. Nope. So uh, we have been really committed ever since the days when she first started growing plants to trying to grow the and provide the very best plants for uh, gardeners in Middle Tennessee. It doesn't matter what you're looking for. could be switchgrass. Could be. It could be uh, red tip photinias. It could be mm -hmm. all manner of things because at Bates Nursery and Garden Center, we, we don't really specialize in mm. a singular thing. We carry Almost everything. If you're in Caroline's world, it's all about tropical plants and all of those kinds of things associated with it. She even has a lot of containers that uh, you can plant those in, yep. decorative containers, all styles and colors. We also have a complete uh, selection of trees, fruiting trees, uh, shade trees, ornamental trees, Japanese maples. Gosh, they're gorgeous. Uh, oh, one out there on the lot. They really are stunning right now. A complete array of shrubbery that you can use in any landscape situation, be it sun, shade, too much moisture, dry area. You know, we try to carry things that will give you solutions to your unique landscape situation because we encounter them all. Mm -hmm. So come on out and see us. We're here to help you. We're uh, open from 9 until 4 o'clock today, noon until 4 Sundays, and it is 9 until 4, Monday through Saturday through the week. So mm -hmm. come out and see us. We are proud sellers of Earthmix Garden products. We really know that, that gives you the best opportunity for success when you're planting, no matter what you're planting. So come out and see us. We've got perennials. We've got, by next weekend, our selection of annuals will be greatly expanded. We do caution you, you know, to be a little restrained. Yep. We're, we're going to have them throughout the season. It is still early, so just be mindful of that. Don't You really don't gain a lot, and frequently you set yourself back if you try to get them out too early. The, not just the area can be cold, but the soil hasn't warmed up sufficiently, So and that's really key. So if you want to get the best horticultural information about plants, uh, because we weren't working in plumbing last week. Mm -hmm. This is we're all we do. Not air filters either. No. no. So we're we're all about plants all the time. That's what we know. That's what we do. And we do it 365 days a year. Actually, 366 this year. Yes. Because yes. it's a leap year. Yep. Mm -hmm. Come out and see us at Bates Nursery and Garden Center, beautifying Nashville since 1932, now for three generations. Uh, we continue to bring the best in plant material to you and uh, – one of the taglines we used to use a lot is, you know, Nashville Gardener's best kept secret. And we, I don't think it's a secret anymore. We ain't no <laughs> secret no, no more. No. Everybody yeah. should know about it. it. Nobody needs to keep it a secret. One of the things we have done to try to help uh, make things a little easier is uh, we've greatly expanded our parking last summer. And I, I gave three months of my life to that effort. <laughs> <laughs> I, I almost gave the entirety. It felt like it. It was, a, it was a tough. You were stressed, David. It was the toughest project yes. I've ever tried to uh, do, but we got it done. And because of that, we got a lot of parking uh, that's available to you. So come on out. Bring your mm -hmm. truck. Bring your <laughs> car. Bring your, if we've got trailer parking. You can, you can park on down. We've got all the things 
bulk materials, bag yes. materials. Come see us, Bates Nursery and Garden Container. Mm-hmm. You know what else we have? What do we have? What? We have a lot of plants. Mm-hmm. And some plants that are in here. What's uh-huh. in room with <laughs> Caroline? So in the corners, look at those, y'all. Wow. Viburnum. Mm. So... I planted a popcorn viburnum a couple weeks ago. I am so excited about it blooming. And then I have one other old school viburnum on my property that is all butted up. And it's just about to open, it looks like. Oh. Um, but I'm a big fan of these. You see it behind my head. Mm-hmm. Gorgeous plants. Uh, and then down below and down in front, we have already talked about this. We got some in um, from a truck in Austin. was like, Caroline, <laughs> we got to get these in the studio. Look how gorgeous they are. And honestly, I'm not a huge fan. I had to die <laughs> over over the deep freeze. But I don't know. I, I see these and I'd say, I'd plant these again. I'd <laughs> give them another chance. But mine were really mature and they were actually pretty gorgeous. So oh. I was sad to lose them. And then we've got annuals. Um, uh-huh. We've got our first shipment of annuals in just a little bit. David has already touched on if you do decide to go ahead and get them, now's not the time to go ahead and make your mixed planters for the for the spring, for the summer. But we do have some colder weather ones like snapdragons. Those like some cold weather. I had Mm -hmm. some that stayed up all the way until we got that snowstorm um, in January and they're actually still alive. They don't look great, but I'm hoping that they'll come back up and I'll get some more blooms. One of my favorite things about snapdragons is you can make them talk. So if you don't know about that, that's a fun thing. I'm always surprised that very many people I come across have never seen snapdragons talk before. Uh, did you guys know that? Yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh definitely. Yeah. I feel like you didn't know this when I met I you. I did. You can don't make your snapdragons talk. I made talk. them snap long ago. Let's see. Let's see if I can get this one. Oh, <laughs> this might take too much time. <laughs> but if you squeeze them, they'll start talking to you. Mm. <laughs> These are being shy this morning, Mm -hmm. and that's okay. Uh (laughs) That is more than fine. And we've also got some more annuals just to fill. We've got some polka dot plants. We've got some geranium. They are looking gorgeous, the ones we got in right now. Y'all come down and get some and keep them inside. So that's what I call a polka dot plant. I get them Mm -hmm. in house plants sometimes. I used them in a mixed container one year. They look really good. They tend to get a little bit leggy and tall, but they love Mm. a good haircut. So Mm. I would just keep cutting mine back to keep them a little bit lower and not let them grow up too much. One of the things people struggle with on annuals in particular is not trimming them enough Mm. or or at all. They will buy them and and never trim them. And if you want to keep them really thick and full, like anything else, you have to sacrifice a few flowers along the way. You've got to cut them. Yeah, people are always afraid to do that with houseplants, with annuals, with whatever, but... Not all plants, but most plants respond really well to that, and they actually need a good cut. Like my cat mint every year, as soon as it blooms, I cut it back, and then I get a second bloom uh, later in the season. Mm. So you'll get more blooms if you cut a lot of stuff. And y'all, let's look at this lazy Susan. Oh, Uh, there's that, there's that beautiful fade. Now we look like one of those late night dancers. That Susan has been working really, really hard. So we got some chenille plants in, or like I like to call them in Jane down in our annual department as well. Hot Cheeto plant. Okay. Yeah, they look kind of like hot Cheetos. Mm-hmm. This one is a little bit small, but as it grows, as it matures, it's going to get longer. It's going to grow over the pot, and they really make great hanging baskets. Um, they can take full sun, which is what keeps these blooms red. So Austin was telling me that if you put them in the shade, they'll lose a lot of that red. They just go dull. They just they want sun, Actually, y'all. they just become very green looking. Yeah. Yes. yeah. But y'all need a hot Cheeto plant. <clears throat> not a hot Cheeto plant. We're going back to it. Yes. There we go. Oh, no, we're not. Tyler's Tyler just said, messing. Oh, there it is. <laughs> Tyler's just messing. Tyler's just having a good time. Uh-huh. But this is just a small sampling of what we have in. Like we talked about, we're getting trucks in every day throughout the week. I think one day we got, what, seven? Wow. And it was just back to back. And some crazy. of them were full. If we were to try to just have one of everything that we sell, we would need about like four buildings <laughs> yes. mm-hmm. just to have one of, you know, it's not even possible. So, you know, we can never in any given uh, show really give you an, a clue as to the, the vastness of our uh, inventory. You can, however, go to, to BatesNursery.com and search all of our inventory online mm-hmm. and it's all right there. And if you want to, you can even uh, make the purchase while you're there or at least give you ideas about what you'll see when you come out. Mm-hmm. And we, we don't ship, unfortunately, to nope. our national viewers. 
But we encourage you, if you vacation to Nashville, to come on down. Yeah, Plus. come on down. Take a walk. Yeah, but mm-hmm. Mike, uh, Mike is uh, asking, do you sell gift cards online? We, oh, yeah. Oh, we oh, do. Yes. yes. Okay. That what is I, the best gift. That's what gift. I always want. And those always. do ship they, they are shippable. Because they are Ship electronic. Ship via email. Yep. Mm-hmm. Nice. Shipping via email. All right. We got another live question in our new YouTube page. It uh-huh. says, I bought a red and black currant to plant, but when researching, I found that I should not plant around white pine trees. My neighbor has a row of white pine trees. Should I just get rid of the currants? Was it 220 currant or was it 110? Mm-hmm. You know what currant it was? Isn't that a raisin? Uh, it's kind of in the family, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's kind of a yeah. weird. I mean, no, a, 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 a raisin is a grape. Yes, I know that. But, but, a, but I mean, a, a current is a is a grape as well. You know, it? I've never observed a current here because don't they live way more up north? They they're do. A northern. And this not, might be a question from up north. They didn't say where they right, were located. Okay. I'm very interested in on why you couldn't plant that next to a white pine. I, I, I don't know. I've never read that. I have no I th- clue why. I think maybe they don't Soil? do that well here, period, and yeah. they just happen to plant it by a white pine. I mean, <laughs> maybe could the, be. They don't. They don't like the heat. Definitely no. no for for certain. That's one plant we really don't even sell here. Is current. I, I don't think I've ever seen a current on the lot. So it may be that this is someone from a, a more northern could viewer. Be. Well, yeah. that's fine, but I mean, it could, it could have to do with the soil acidity around the pine trees. Pine. Maybe. Um, maybe. Don't, don't know much about currants. Uh, I, mean, I don't either. You know, they're good fruit salad, but I mean, yeah, we'll have to think about it okay. a little bit. Maybe yeah. we'll get back to uh, it. I'll research current a little bit. Hey, Kimberly I guess. wants to know, do you have the roses that don't have thorns and is now the time to plant them? We don't yet. Okay. And now take that with a grain of salt because there's still a little bit of thorns, even on the least thorny one. So you will still see some thorns, yeah. but we don't quite have those yet. That's more of like a first couple of weeks of April. We start to get those and you will see our best selection of roses. It's the best time of the year. Is that a shrub type? Uh, it's a climber. I climber. think we're talking okay. about, um, I think Zephyrin Druin is the variety that. Hmm. Okay. Fancy. And then Mary on our uh, Bates Facebook page is asking, looking for cold hardy camellias and Mahonia soft caress. Do you have them? We do have cold hardy camellia and we do sell soft caress Mahonia. Soft caress Mahonia is the least hardy of the Mahonias. Okay. I'm sorry to tell y'all. But it's got a it, fun name. It does. And it is soft. Most Mahonia, as you know, will, will eat you it just i mean it just grabs on it's the thorniest pokiest little thing you got to be careful with it but soft caress hence the name is much softer i talked to a good horticulturist actually a few years ago that he said even in memphis a lot of times soft caress dies over the winter time so it is the least hardy of them just so you know there's other options we can get you that maybe look a little bit like that but maybe do a little bit better so just know Mm -hmm. just know Uh okay do i need to prune pw pillar hibiscus P.W. Pillar. I'm proven winners. Proven winners. winners. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. Pillar, that being Althea. Okay, we're talking. Look at you thinking that. I wish we were on Austin's face. He closed his eyes really tight. <laughs> I really like, think. Oh. Uh, Rosa Sharon is what you're talking about. Um, if you need to prune it, prune it. Yes. I mean, is it too big? If it's too big, prune mm. it. We talk about this all the time, but they bloom off new wood. It doesn't matter how you cut it. It's going to send new stems up, and it's going to bloom on this year's current wood, or last year's wood and this year's wood. So if you need to get it back in check, certainly get it back in check. It's time to do it. Rosa Sharon has not woken up yet, so get it pruned up. Okay, Jeez. I got a little information here about mm-hmm. currants and the it. relationship with pine trees. That, that they were banned in the mid '60s, along with gooseberries. You know, they are all in the grape family okay. because of a fungal disease that uh, can infect white pines and cause white pine blister rust. Interesting. So wow, but the the ban has since been lifted, but. Due to that, uh, the use of them has not been ever widespread established. So perhaps that's something we can uh, inquire about. Uh-huh. But here's a nice little picture at the very top. It's a long way up there. Oh, isn't that lovely? That's that is a, lovely. That's More a like beautiful a cherry. photo. So they're, they're yeah. like a, a miniature little grape. Okay. So, Pretty cute. Yep. Mm. Very nice. I'd grow them if I could. Mm. Okay. Let's talk about some bulbs. We had someone that forgot about some fall bulbs that they have. Huh? Can I still throw them in the ground? Throw them in the dirt. Throw Why them not? in the If you have them, go ahead and do it. Dig a hole. I mean, boom. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Slam no, them in the earth. earth. You didn't <laughs> throw it hard enough. Throw it again. <laughs> yeah. Now, I mean, I'd say go ahead and do it. I don't know if you'll get any flowers this year. Maybe you still will. 
If they but, were pre-chilled, mm-hmm. possibly so, mm-hmm. because yep. that, you know you've had dormancy built in on the front end if they've been pre-chilled, and we won't get into that whole right. discussion right mm-hmm. now, but it's possible. Yeah. yeah, get them in the ground. Go ahead and do it. I had some that I planted late, and I planted them because I had them, and they did way better in ground, and I tried to um, let some go dormant in a closet. Those all shriveled They'll up. They'll just they were dehydrate. Yeah. They You'll get nothing for sure if you leave them in the closet. So mm-hmm. stick it in the ground. All right, can you plant mm-hmm. daffodil and tulip bulbs in pots? Yes, you can. I did that last year. They looked fantastic, but then they did not come back this year. I, I planted tulips in bulb. Um, Martin Thurr is watching the show. Marty. Hey, Marty. How are you? Right. Good he, to see you. He liked the tweet. So. It, it, has, okay. it has uh, been a minute. Yeah, it's been a minute. Mm-hmm. So bring some Cincinnati chili down with you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So we got a follow up about the current question. They live in Morristown, Tennessee. Okay. Oh. They say they kill the pines. Yes, they do. It That's is a they, it is yeah. a blister rust that, fungus. Yeah, that, yeah. But the uh, supposedly the fungal has been eradicated. But but they are here in Tennessee. It is right. a it is one of those host type plants that currants are and gooseberries are for that fungal that can pass between pine trees and them. So. You know, if you've got a lot of pine tree investment, maybe mm. you don't want them. Mm. Morristown's yeah. a little further north of us, too, up in the mountains, isn't it? Is east. It east. I don't know. Up in the, yep. It's, yeah. it's way well, east of work. Well, yeah, well, let us know how it goes. Yeah. Yeah. Keep yeah. us informed. We I want to see how your currents do. Mm-hmm. That sounds like a different version of the cedar apple rust that we get uh, down here, uh, which is symbiotic possible. in the south. Yes. Except it's that's not that's lethal. Not killer. That's yeah. not lethal to either side. It's just deformative a uh-huh. bit. Yep. All right, we got a question on our Facebook page. Do you have experience with New Dawn roses in partial sun, some shade in a northwest facing house? And it's, that yes. would probably be on, not in. Yes, <laughs> I've and heard it's they do good. well in partial shade. Uh, it seems like they need a lot of sun. I had a New Dawn. Um, it actually got rose rosette, but it was in full sun and it did great in full sun. So yeah, I don't think any rose does well in very much shade at all. He doesn't really want it, no. Now, New Dawn is our best selling climbing rose i once saw a picture of a three-story home with new dawn climbing to the top of it yes. oh. out in dixon county that was incredible she yes. gasped oh that my god amazing. god it's huge yeah. <laughs> so roses in a little roses in some more shade will stretch even further that's what they're yeah. they're really reaching for the sun so that's probably what you'll what you'll see and you may not get the flower production that you want but it'll probably live but you may, you know, full sun's definitely better for roses. Yeah. That's one of the worst things you could hear from Austin. It'll probably live. <laughs> probably <laughs> live. Like, if it lives ugly, that's what's not the ideal. Point? Yeah. That's my thing. <clears throat> Speaking of things you hear from Austin, best boxwood variety for cold snaps. <laughs> Do it. All right. Uh, green velvet. One. Still yep. my best seller. My, uh-huh. It's on my home. They look picture perfect. They're flushing right now, y'all. Oh, my God. They're flushing. It's my oh. favorite. And mine has never taken a hit with all of the. All the weird weather we've had the last couple of years. Yeah, very cold hardy variety. You know which one you shouldn't plant? Justin Browers. Yeah. I'm so mad at him. I'm so, so mad. mad at yeah. him. It's uh, okay. Barbara wants to know yeah. is it time to cut back butterfly bush? Yes. Get it done. Yep. Do it, Barbara. It's a, Do it, Barbara. It, it is a flowerer on new wood. <laughs> That's right. Horror. Get yep. it done. All right. I've been Get eyeing a Jane Magnolia. Is it worth it? Yes, yes. It is worth it, even if it takes a hit. Why are you closing your eyes like that? Just because of the frost that gets it every year. It's still worth it. Like the buds, when they're on there, they open. And if the frost gets it, it's fine. And like mine does, mine reflowers. Okay. And I feel like mine's not the only one that does. So maybe. Uh, I don't Look. I don't see that to be a prevalent trait. So I still <laughs> think you should be isolating that. And, yes. Uh, but I like Jane Magnolia too, y'all. I like it. It's a beautiful bloomer. But get ready to be disappointed sometimes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I love it. Yeah, how's your, how does yours look years, right, yeah. right yeah. now? I'm sure it looks real good right now. It's, it's a little, little bit brown little dead right now. mummies of flowers dangling atop but the But the leaves are starting to come out, and it, I mean, mm-hmm. even like the bark of the tree, to me, looks really good. Like, it's a very pretty tree. Is its Don't bark, me. It, is its bark worse, worse than, than its bark? Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's a good question as far as these blooms bum, bum. dying. Yeah. Yeah, tip your waiters I say it's worth it. I say do it. You know which one I really want is the yellow deciduous magnolia. What is that? Something butterfly? There's butterfly two eyes or yellow bird. Yellow bird. Yellow bird paired with the what's the black one? Those look oh, just, just great. There's a black get. one. There's well, black what? tulip. It's like purple. Oh. Duck, oh, deep, deep purple. Yeah. There's one, oh, what's it called? Vul- not Vulcan. There's one that's super deep. 
Both high German. <laughs> Those planted together are really <laughs> stunning. Yeah. <laughs> uh-huh. And they do flower later, so you're less susceptible to freeze damage. Yeah. So they don't live long and prosper. <laughs> they could. They do. They might. Okay. They might. It might happen. Yeah. Yeah. Let's talk passion flower. Oh. My passion flower died. Do they always go completely dormant in the winter? Uh, the native one does. I've seen that one go dormant. I know Tyler's got one in a pot right outside the green room. <laughs> it's and dirt it's just right a now. Stick still. right now, but I mm. bet it's going to flush back out. They are a decidedly a warm weather. Mm-hmm. plant so hot yes. it'll come back hot it'll come back weather. once it warms up going. it'll they say explode. here i am i'm ready to go uh, oh Music. Valerie, she loves her jeans. <laughs> Valerie loves her Jane Magnolia. Good. Oh. Yes, Valerie. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, well, music means that this hour has flown by. Yeah, it certainly mm-hmm. has. But uh, next Saturday morning, we'll come back and do another one. Hey, tune in. Watch for the podcast all week long and listen to it as you drive home or go to school or Wednesday. Wednesday. Wednesday is podcast. Get your questions out there, you yep. know, and you can um, send can... pictures to the email address. And that is what, Caroline? Gardening inside out at gmail.com. Absolutely, because oh. we want to show your successes. If you've got a problem, we need to see that a lot of the times as well. So that's the best way for us to do so. Yep. Hey, for everybody here at Gardening Inside Out, we thank you for participating in the program. Uh, like us, share us, tell the whole world, because we want to be here to service you. Hey, next week we'll be here from Bates Nursery for Gardening Inside Out. Just keep digging. Digging. Yes. <laughs> <laughs>